Sometimes in math or science or other fields, we run into problems where we need to solve systems of simultaneous linear equations. When we were in school, we often had to solve systems of linear equations, specifically two equations with two variables like x and y, and that took us normally a few minutes. Uh, when we were presented with problems that had three equations and three variables, this took much longer. When the problems contained more than three equations, the time to solve these went way up. And in addition, the results were often prone to error in the calculation. In this video, I want to show you how to bring these types of problems down to size by using the tool of Microsoft Excel and some of the matrix functions that it has. Let's take a look. Okay, here's the first example we're going to take a look at. This one's pretty easy to solve by hand. It's a two by two system of, equ of equations using X and Y as variables. And the way we do this is we come up here in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, put labels X and Y and then I'm going to come over here and say constant for the uh, for the headings and under here I'm going to use the coefficient on the left side for X for the first equation which is 2 and the next one is negative 3 and the constant number is 7. Likewise, for the second equation, we do 2, excuse me, 3, negative 1, and the constant is also negative 1. And I'm going to do one other thing just for cosmetic purposes. I'm going to take these two, actually all of these labels, and make them right justified. That way they they look a little better for uh, appearances there. Okay, so the way you solve this is we can, I'm going to go down to here. We first draw a box that's the same size as this array of numbers, or matrix if you want to use that term. And we're going to type in this box a function called matrix inverse. And we do that by saying equals... You can look up here and watch what I'm typing, but you can also see it down here. And I'm going to go M, and when you do that, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of functions appear underneath it. They fly out, and the one I want to use is called matrix inverse or M inverse. So I go M I, and you see now the list is shortened. N still shorter. B, and there it is, right there, and I'm going to double click on that, and you notice right here a, an open parenthesis occurs. Now what it's saying is, give me an array, you see where it says right there, it says array, so give me an array, I'm going to grab this array right here, and it says B6, which is column B, row 6, through, that's what the colon means, C7, so column C and row 7. Now, I could close this with a uh, close parenthesis and hit enter, but matrix functions in Excel require what's called CSE. That's Control, Shift, Enter. So I'm going to hold down the, the, the Shift and the Control and press Enter, when I do that, you'll see that it fills in all of the places in the matrix. If I had done it the other way, I would have only gotten a result in the first in the first cell up here. But now I have all of these. So what this is, is this is the inverse matrix of this matrix right here. And for more on, on uh, matrixes, matrices, uh, I'm not going to include that in this video. Um, you can get that from another source. Okay, now, to solve for the X's and Y's, 
what we do is we multiply this column matrix by this rectangular matrix, or square matrix in this case, and we're going to do that right here. So we want two answers. So I'm going to repeat the shape of this column matrix right down here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a matrix multiplication. So I'm going to hit equals, M, M, and you'll see it says M, M, U, L, T. And that says returns the matrix products of two arrays. Okay. So I'll double click on that. And the first one I'm going to choose is this one. And then those are separated by a comma. You see that little comma right there? So I'm going to actually type a comma. And then pick the second array. Second array. And there it gives, gives, us, gives us that one. And again, shift, control, enter. And there are our answers. So that one was pretty easy. Let's see what the second one looks like. Okay, so here's our second example. And this is a three by three equation, three equations and three variables. I'm using the variables R, S, and T. And um, you know, probably back in your algebra class that you took a million years ago, you looked at this and said, oh my goodness, I'm going to mess this one up because it takes so long and I'm, I always make mistakes with these. Well, anyway, let's, let's see what Excel can do for us uh, on this one. Okay, so first off, I'm going to do the, my headings like I did in the previous example. I'm going to go R, S, T, skip a space there and do constant. There we go. And I'm going to uh, left justify all of these. And there we go. So it looks fine. Okay, now, this one's going to introduce another interesting uh, twist to solving simultaneous equations. Uh, for the first one, what is the, what is the coefficient? Well, the coefficient there is going to be, uh, let me move that out of the way. The coefficient there is going to be 1 for the R. And for the S, it's also going to be R. Uh, it's also going to be 1. But for this one, for the T, it's going to be negative 1. So you've got to be careful when you, when you type those in. And then we're going to come over here and make this our constant 7. Okay. And here's where, um, here's where we'll throw a little curve at you. Uh, R is 2. S is what? Negative 1, that's right. But what is T? I don't see a T there. Well, that's going to be 0. So don't forget your zeros. Those are important um, when you're doing simultaneous equations. And then the constant here happens to also be 0. Okay. So now let's go over here for the third equation. 3, 2, and uh-oh. Where's T? Ah, that's right. I made a mistake. So what's S in this case? S is the zero in this case. I tried to fool you there. Okay, so T is two. So three, zero, and two. So you got to be careful. And that's why these column, uh, columns will help you. And we come over here, the constant is 15. Okay, so again, we're going to take... Uh, this equation and, and write the inverse of that, or this matrix and write the inverse of that. And we'll do that down here. You could do it anywhere in Excel, but this makes it kind of uh, organized. Okay, and if you remember, we hit equals M, I, and I can just go down here and pick it, double click on that. Select the matrix that I want, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. And look what I get. I only get a value there in the, in the uh, first cell of that inverse matrix. Why is that? Well, if you remember, when we do matrix operations in Excel, we don't hit enter, we use control shift enter. So I'm going to, I'm going to erase this one, delete that one and start over and say, okay, equals, don't forget the equal sign when you're doing 
functions in Excel or any kind of calculation in Excel. It'll always start a calculation with equals. MI, double click on this, select the matrix we want to find the inverse of, and then hit Shift and Control together and hit Enter, and there we go. And how about that? There's, a, there's our, our inverse matrix. Now, to find the answers, we come over here, draw a box the same shape as this column matrix, and now we're going to do equals MM, matrix multiplication, multiply this one, what do we put right here? Well, if you forget, you just look down on, on here and it shows you a comma, comma, and select that one, and don't hit enter, hit control shift enter, and there are our results. Pretty easy and pretty quick. In fact, it didn't take us any longer to do this one than it did to do the two by two. So that makes it really nice when we have to solve these types of problems. Okay, all right, are you ready for the big one? Let's take a look at example number three. Okay, so here's our final example, and this one is a five by five system of equations. And uh, if you were presented, to, uh, presented this on a test, you'd probably say, forget it, I'll, I'll quit. Uh, if you were presented this in homework, you know, this, this would be really tough to do. It would take you all night to do this one. But uh, with Excel, we're going to see that it just takes uh, just a few seconds or a few minutes to do this one. Okay, so let's, let's start off. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my, my headings. In this one, I'm using A, B, C, D, and E. So A, B, C, D, and E. And this will be the constant. Oops. constant there. And like I did before, I'm going to justify these to the right. And okay, let me just move this over one. There we go. Okay. So now uh, we're going to type in all of the coefficients. And again, remember to be careful of um, be careful of the um, the zeros in the problem. Let me justify that one real quick. Okay, there we go. Don't forget the zeros that appear, and you'll see that in each one of these. Okay, so the first one, A is 1, B is 1, C is not there, so that must be 0, D is 0, and E is 0. And the constant is what? Well, it's 0 also. Okay. Over here, to the second equation, A is missing, so that's going to be 0. B is negative 1. C is 1. D and E are both 0. And the constant term is 1. Okay, come over here to the third equation. This is uh, A is going to have 8. B is going to be 4. And C is, is it 1 or negative 1? Well, it's negative 1. Don't forget the negative sign. D is 1. And E is 0. And the constant term there is 10. And the fourth equation, negative 4. Oops, what did we do? We made a mistake, didn't we? Now, the A term is not negative 4. The A term is 0. The B term is negative 4. So we see how easy we can make mistakes there. C is 4. D is negative 1. And E is 1. And the constant term is 3. Finally, we have 16. B is not there. Excuse me. C is negative 4. D is not there, so that's 0. 
and E is negative 1. And the constant term here is 36. Now, since this is a little bit large, I'm going to move my top part off out of the way there. And let's see how this will look. And just to show you how quickly you can do this, I'm going to assume that you know what I did in the previous two examples, and I'm going to do this at a relatively faster pace. <coughs> Excuse me again. So I draw a box of five by five. Five, yep. And I'm going to say equals MI. Double click on that one. Select this guy. And what do we do? Control Shift Enter. There's our, our array. And just for fun, I'm going to unbold that. And then over here, I'm going to take those five, that column of five, and do which, what was the uh, function? Equal M, M, matrix multiplication. Double click on that. Select this one. Two are separated by what? A comma. Boom. Select that one. Control Shift Enter. There are my answers. I'm done. So, I did something there, a five by five system, in probably less time than it would take you to do a three by three by hand. So how about that? So let's review what we've learned. When you're solving simultaneous equations using Microsoft Excel, first off, keep it organized by using labels for all of your variables. And when you're inputting the coefficients for each equation, don't forget to use zero when a particular variable does not appear in that equation. To inverse or to invert the square matrix, use M inverse. And also when you finish that, don't forget to use CSE or Control Shift Enter. That will fill in the whole matrix. And then finally, when you want to multiply the two matrices together, use M mult and put in the two arrays separated by a comma. Well, I hope that helps you and takes all of the uh, drudgery and fear out of solving simultaneous equations. Thanks for listening.